Now, the year 2019 has been adjudged as a remarkable one by political analysts owing to the fact of the general elections and other political events that shaped it. As the year wraps up, our correspondent Mary Chinda takes us through some of the biggest stories in the special report. Hardly has any year been as politically anticipating and heated as the year 2019, the election year in Nigeria. Like a clash of the titans, over 90 political parties registered with INEC and at least 60 are in the number one seat, the office of Mr. President. The year kicked off with loads of political brainstorming in the camp of the major contending parties, the APC and the PDP. The APC chaired by Adams Oshomale and fielding incumbent President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Yami Oshibajo and the PDP chaired by Uche Sakundas and fielding former Vice President Atiku Obobaka and Peter Obi in a frantic effort to claim power of the incumbent. The political space set gear in motion in January with Atiku Obobaka of the PDP making what could be described as a triumphant entry into the United States after 12 years for allegedly laundering over $40 million into the United States. The success of this trip alongside then-Senate President Bukolo Saraki was regarded by political analysts as crossing one of the most serious political hurdles on his part ahead of the presidential elections. Then, this long drama about the suspension and later the removal of the CJN Justice Walter Onoge over alleged corruption charges grabbed major news headlines as he stood trial on charges of non-declaration of assets instituted against him before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The political permutations took a new twist with a coalition of young gladiators who believed Nigeria was ripe for a younger president. Inspired by the not-too-young-to-run movement, the young gladiators agreed to form a coalition championed by Fela Durutoye, Kingsley Mogalu, Obi Ezekwesili and Omoyele Shore, among other army of young Nigerians. But this political marriage was short-lived by a clash of interest. Former Education Minister and one of the two women in the presidential race, Obieza Kweseli, resigned as the presidential candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria on January the 24th, barely 21 days to the February 16 election. Like another movie suspense, hours into the election D-Day, February 16, the electoral umpire, Einek, announced the unforeseen postponement of the presidential election. The sad development sparked up a battle of words between major contending parties, the ABC and the PDP. Finally, February 21st came and INEC moved full swing into the presidential election. After days of collation, the electoral umpire declared the incumbent APC candidate, President Mohamed Buhari, winner, defeating PDP's Atiku Abubakar after winning 19 states out of the 36 states, while the PDP took 17 states. Mogalo and Durotoye, who remained resilient, did not make it during the elections. The political gear, therefore, shifted to various states as Nigerians kept themselves busy with the manifestos of an avalanche of political parties and campaigns across several states. And March 9 gubernatorial election came with the APC winning Lagos State, Kaduna State, Bonu, Gombe, Jigawa, Kasina, Kebi, Kwara, Nasarawa, Niger State, Ogun State, Yobe, Zamfara, Kanu, and Plateau State. And the PDP winning states like Abia, Akwaibum, Cross River, Delta, Ebony, Enugu, Oyo, Taraba, Benue, Adamawa, Bauchi, and Sokoto. Imo State was one of the embattled states politically as the power tussle between incumbent Governor Rocha Sokorocha and the party chairman Adams Oshomale over his anointed candidate and son-in-law Uchemosu thickened. Unfortunately, the governor was thoroughly frustrated and toppled out of office as the PDP won the elections with Emeka Hedioha, a battle Okoracha didn't see losing. 
River State was another flashpoint, though incumbent Governor Nyesomwike of the PDP returned elected. It was a tough battle put up between the PDP and the APC, led by its leader in the state. Transport Minister Rotimi Amechi and his anointed candidate Tony Cole, who in himself has a running battle with the Rivers East Senator Magnus Abbey. In October, the Supreme Court dealt a sad blow to every ray of hope that the PDP and Atikwa Bobaka had to take over Asorok. As the apex court dismissed the appeal filed by the PDP challenging the victory of President Muhammad Buhari at the February 23rd poll. Embattled Senator Dino Milaye of the PDP was shown his way out of the Senate. He also lost a re-election for the Kogi West senatorial election rerun to his perennial rival and APC counterpart, Senator Smart Ademi. In the November 16 governorship election in Bayalsa and Kogi State, the APC defeated the PDP, adding both Bayalsa and Kogi State to its cart of victory, with David Leon in Bayalsa and maintaining Governor Yahya Bello in Kogi State. As the year draws to a close, Omoyele Showere, publisher of Sahara Reporters, who hit public consciousness with his Revolution Now protest, was rearrested. His dramatic rearrest, after being granted bail by Justice Ijoma Ojuku of the Federal High Court in Abuja, is just like the running battle between the APC National Chairman Adams Oshomole and his aggrieved political son, which has created the major political crescendo of political activities and epic puzzle of the year 2019. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. We still have Jide Ulogu in the studio to help review some of the biggest story in 2019 as captured in that report. Thank you very much for staying with us. You're welcome. What is your assessment of governance in Nigeria in the past year? Governance is different from politics. Politics makes room for you to have the opportunity of driving the governance process. So, so when we talk about governance, I conclude that we have failed in delivering good governance. And given the last one year, what we have seen in the political landscape is so scary. You know, we, we witness the level of violence that political processes have attracted, not just that alone. You look at returns on investment, the 2019 election got about 286 billion naira, and yet we still ended up with several complaints. And you may want to compare that with the election that took place in the UK about two or three weeks ago, free of you know pronounced rancors and things like that. So you now ask the question: Are these people really interested in governance? or just driving their political ambitions. If it's about governance, firstly, the desperation we have witnessed will not be there. Because if you are coming to serve the people, it imposes responsibilities on you. But if you are coming in to be served by the people, that is when you witness that level of desperation. And from what we just monitored now, you also saw the incumbent government struggling to win elections and that tells us that the governance profile was poor because within the window of time nigeria became the capital of poverty and you see governance is about the engagement of resources formulation of policies implementation of policies to advance the fortunes of a nation. So if that has been done effectively, by now we should have solved our problems to a large extent. But it appears that despite the investments we put into it, we are drifting backwards. And that puts a question mark on what you just asked me governance. now. Governance. Uh, governance. So in terms of governance, when you look at the elements of good governance, globally speaking, you may even discover 
as reflected by the sustainable development goals of the United Nations that we are so far away from it. It talks about zero hunger, zero poverty, decent work. But is it, is it actually ever possible to get to the point where you have zero hunger, zero poverty, zero almost zero everything? Will we ever get to that point? I mean, globally, not just in the Nigerian contest. If, if we have resourceful leadership, generally, you cannot achieve an absolute performance rating. Talking about 100%, all countries of the world have their challenges. But at least, let us bridge the gap. And that is where the problem lies. And in asking me whether it is possible in Nigeria, why not? It is possible in Nigeria. For example, if you look at this country, I say it that we are overblessed by God. Look at the Middle Belt that suddenly became a, a war zone in court. It's the food basket of the country. You want to talk about ranching opportunities that we have in the country. You want to talk about the oil and gas deposit. Africa has, Nigeria has the largest deposit of proven gas in Africa. <laughs> so when you look at the resources we have, we should not be a poor country at all. So, and these are issues of governance but also I have discovered that why we have failed to maximize these brilliant opportunities is because we have not defined our uniting force we are not a united people so the, 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 rather than completing we compete rather than collaborate we, you know what I mean? You know, the more you speak, the more questions are coming up. But I'm trying to see if we can just, uh, you know, streamline within uh, the time frame we have. 2019 is just days from passing away. Um, what would you say? You know, we've talked about governance and you don't seem too happy. But there must be something uh, that you would pick out from this government that they've been able to achieve. What for you would be the biggest achievement? And on the flip side, what will be the greatest failing of this government in 2019? You know, it's, it's difficult really to talk about biggest achievement. Perhaps I move to the area of the rail system that is ongoing in the country, and I hope we quickly move on on that. Then I may want to also attend to the endorsement of the reforms in the petroleum sector, if it is well implemented, then you talk about education. I think it's only in some states that we are beginning to have serious attention to education. Talk about Kaduna State, about you know, uh, some states you can mention. But generally speaking, we have not done much in that area. You talk about health also. It's still in critical condition, particularly when you read reports even coming from the government. And you look at the prosperity of the people. There is still poverty in the land. And you balance it with our indebtedness. You must feel sorry for the nation. I think right now our indebtedness is about 25.6 trillion naira. And what have we done with the money? And okay, let, let, let me interrupt you because so, we're time pressed. So what yes. the, the, one of the biggest stories of 2019 is the general elections. What would be your assessment, in, as quickly as you can, um, the I'm, uh, how I'm, INEC conducted it? I'm disturbed because of the violence we have introduced into our electoral processes. It's quite unhealthy, and I'm traumatized by the fact that the Inspector General of Police came out to admit that fake policemen overpowered the real policemen in Nigeria. And sure that is, is case. That is. Yeah, that was another case. issue. Another is, top story is the uh, way the is, revolution is, is now a global yeah. a, a global embarrassment to Nigeria. The DSS representing the executive arm has desecrated the, the legislative arm by blocking the National Assembly at the time. They have desecrated judiciary. And the big question now is that do we have the separations of power? But I'm not surprised. The president himself declared at the time that the respect for the rule of law will be subject to national security interests. And the big question is that who interprets this? And don't forget that in the midst of all this, we came up with a hate speech bill seeking to introduce death penalty, different kinds of policies 
that are anti-people. And right now, again, a serious governance concern is the, 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 the proposed increase in taxes. So businesses are stifled, the environment is investment hostile, and you don't prosper in such an environment. So Indeed. the government needs to go back to the constitution. The primary purpose of government is the protection, security, and the welfare of the people. I'm afraid we have Provide to Provide for the people, we'll protect the there. people, create an enabling environment. And Thank the you very much, available. Mr. Thank you very much, Thank uh, you very Mr. Much. Jide, for coming on the news. A pleasure to have you join us. Thank you.